So I'm getting back to the Mom's Timer project, and you can see I've got quite a layout here on the breadboard right now. Um, so last I left the project, I was working on um, testing out different battery protection ICs. And so I've got one right here. It's called the DW01, and um, that is all set up here. Uh, since that video, uh, I have just recently saw an, another way of doing battery protection by uh, this guy here, David Watts. He was talking about a microchip voltage detector, this TC54. And this is a pretty, pretty neat solution to being able to do this. Basically, all it does will um, take a look at whatever voltage is coming in on its input pin, and if it's below a certain threshold, it'll just signal that by turning uh, this pin on or off, the, the V out. So, um, so you can get this where it detects if it gets below three volts, and then this just goes low. And then you could hook that up very easily to a, um, an in-channel uh, MOSFET to protect your light poly battery. So I've got uh, the breadboard all set up here with the um, USB to serial converter. And then I'm not using this chip. This is I just put it on here because I had a room. It's just an in-channel MOSFET. It's not being used right now. And then this is the battery charger. And then this is the, the light poly battery protector. And then this is a the 3.3 volt regulator, and then here's the microcontroller. And then I've just got a blink program running on the microcontroller right now. And I've got the uh, battery charger set up with three 1K resistors in series to set the charge rate. Um, I've, I've got 500 milliamps available in the USB port, and that's what I'm going to be uh, using to charge up the battery pack that's in the mom's timer base station and the battery pack that's in the little key fob part. So I wanna split that 500 milliamps up appropriately and give myself some room. So with the three 1K resistors, that's gonna set a charge rate of about 333 megahertz, or I'm sorry, 333 milliamps. Um, and then I'll be able to use maybe like 80 or 100 milliamps for the key fob and then have a little bit of extra headroom. So uh, I'm just going to test that out real quickly right now. Get this USB charger plugged in. Before I plug the charger in, this is the uh, milliamp draw coming from the battery. And it's just bouncing around as the uh, light comes on and off. And then this is the voltage of the battery pack. All right, so I just plugged it in and the charging LED came on. And we're putting uh, 323 milliamps into the battery pack and it's jumped up to four volts um, right when I plugged it in. So the, the charge rate is um, a little formula here. Uh, basically it's 1000 divided by whatever the kilo ohm value is of R4 in my schematic here for the charger. And so that's how I got that 333 milliamps. So um, it looks like it's uh, pretty close, um, 322, that's pretty close. Uh, maybe it's a little bit um, lower than 333 because the, the battery isn't quite all the way dead. So that looks really good. Okay, I'm going to test the power draw when the microcontroller is asleep now. So I've just got a little sketch so I can hit a button and the microcontroller will wake up. It turns on the LED here. And then this is the power draw when it's awake with the LED on. 9.2 milliamps. And then it goes back to sleep, it is drawing 42 microamps. So from my previous testing, this was more like one or two microamps. So there's something uh, in here, in all the circuitry, that's drawing a little bit more power. So I will see if I can figure out how to cut that power draw. I was able to get the power draw down to 5.3 microamps by simply removing uh, the VCC, VCC connection to the USB to serial converter that I'm using here. And so the VCC on it is just hooked into the VCC from the USB port. So there must be some kind of phantom power getting into it somehow. But, uh, but you can see 5.3 microamps when that, uh, that is removed. 
The serial converter has got a reset uh, pin on pin 11 here, and uh, right now it's drawing 38 microamps. I've got the microcontroller to sleep and everything. If I take the reset and I tie it low, then it goes back to 5.3 microamps. And then if I remove the reset from being low, it's still 5.3. So, um, and then I can, I can go and plug in USB again and um, unplug it. And then here it's at 38 microamps, so the microcontroller is just asleep again. So I come back and hit reset again. It goes down to 5.4. Okay, so we got the 38 microamps going again and let me take this resistor and tie the reset pin low with it and now we're down to 5.3 microamps so that looks good if I plug USB back in so it's charging the battery let me make sure the serial Converter is still working all right. Good. And if I unplug this. All right. That looks like it's working okay. Um, so what I did was I kind of drew myself a little schematic here to think through it. So this is the... Um, FTDI 230XS serial converter here with its reset pin. It's active low. So what I did was I tied the reset pin down to ground with a 10K resistor. I actually, I was trying a, um, a 10 uh, million ohm resistor, but that, didn't, that one didn't work, but this 10K one just did. What I've got here is a NPN transistor, and I Usually this reset pin is tied up to 3.3 volts from the FTDI. Um, here's the 3.3 volt out of the FTDI chip and it's, I've got it tied directly to the reset and so it's just active all the time. But what I did was I'm switching that on and off with this NPN transistor. So when the 5 volts is plugged into the USB port, it turns on the transistor and lets the 3.3 volts go uh, to the reset pin. And uh, it seems to be working out okay. Now, um, this is a, this transistor is good for, I don't know, like 800, 600 milliamps, something like that. I could just use a really small signal transistor, but I don't have any of those in service mounts. I've got one that's equivalent to this one, so I just wanted to see if I could get it to work. And it looks like it's okay. Now, of this 5.3 or 5.4 microamps that the meter's displaying here, Five microamps is just from the 3.3 volt regulator. That's the, the microchip 1703 right there that's doing that. So it's only 0.3 or 0.4 microamps for all the rest of it. And um, yeah, it's working uh, working great. This is exactly what I wanted to do was have a, a very low power system when I've got the microcontroller, the charger, battery protection IC, and serial converter all plugged in and everything is asleep and it looks it looks really good this is what i wanted to do so now i just need to add in a few more parts i've got the display the shift register to drive it rgb led rotary encoder buzzer and the 2.4 gigahertz transceiver I think all these are going to be pretty straightforward to uh, to put into a low power state. I think I might use like a high side switch to turn turn this on and off with. I've got a uh, MOSFET to do that with. And um, I think with the shift register, I'll be able to turn that off really easily too. And these these will be a piece of cake, no big deal for the rest of it. So yeah, I think, uh, I think what I've done what I wanted to do. With the kitchen timer project, I think I was around 20 microamps when it was asleep. So um, this is quite a bit better. And it's really, most, you know, pretty much all of it's from just the voltage regulator. So that's great.